What happened in AI this week? Every week in AI feels big. So big that possibly AI fatigue is setting in. This week, markets continued to question valuations. Employees were told to move faster or to move aside. China is betting big on chips and India just cracked the global top three in AI. Inside companies, AI hype is fading, but productivity is rising. Gates summed it up nicely at the Abu Dhabi Finance Week. AI is a deeply profound technology that will reshape the world. Here are the 11 things that happened this week in AI that actually mattered. Let's start with number one, the AI markets being under pressure. Over the last two years, artificial intelligence has been one of the strongest narratives driving global equity markets. Growth expectations were high and valuations reflected confidence in long-term AI adoption. This week, that confidence was tested. Oracle is down nearly 20% over the past month. Most AI-linked stocks other than Google also moved lower this month. NVIDIA declined by approximately 6%. Microsoft fell by around 4%. SoftBank 2 has come under pressure with its stock falling amid concerns over exposure to AI related investment. A more pronounced example is CoreWeave, an AI-focused cloud infrastructure provider whose stock is down around 60% over the last six months. Investor concerns on the large-scale data center build-outs and the extent of this explosion that has been financed through debt. At the other end of the spectrum, signs of excess in valuation are also visible. According to Bloomberg, RRP Semiconductor, a relatively unknown Indian company until recently, saw its shares rise over 55,000% in less than two years, making it the highest gaining stock globally among companies with a market cap above 1 billion. The rally has raised questions around valuations and the AI bubble hype. So the question again comes up, are we in an AI bubble? As of December 18th, we asked six of the most popular models the same question. This time, five out of six replied, yes, we are. Last week, this was only two out of six. The reasoning among the models is consistent. Valuations have outpaced revenues. Compute demand is growing faster than monetization and adoption is lagging behind the hype. The conclusion is not that AI is failing. Rather, markets appear to be entering a phase of disciplined evaluation. At number two are the takeaways from Mustafa Suleiman. This week, Mustafa Suleiman, who now leads AI at Microsoft, appeared on the Bloomberg podcast and the Peter Diamandis podcast, offering a clear framework of where AI and Microsoft are heading next. Suleiman outlined five structural shifts that will define the next phase of computing. Number one, Microsoft and OpenAI, from collaborators to competitors at the same time. Microsoft has started to develop its own AI models to gain self-sufficiency, while it still holds a license to open AI models up to 2032. We should start seeing these models in the market as early as next year. Number two, computing is moving from interfaces to agents. We are moving away from apps, browsers, and even OSs to conversational agentic systems with memory, context, and the ability to act. 
APIs will blur into agents in a few years. Microsoft won't just sell models, it will sell certified, trusted agents you delegate work to. Suleiman emphasized that this transition to agentic systems will be uneven and disruptive, particularly for roles built around routine work. The third major thing he talked about was open models and why they're winning on economics, because this is not about ideology. For many organizations, models are just good enough at a much, much lower cost. This outweighs the marginal gains in quality. At number four, he talked about medicine, in which AI has already become superhuman. In areas such as imaging, diagnostics, and pattern recognition, AI systems already exceed human performance. The bottlenecks are deployment, regulation, and trust, not technical capability. And number five, he highlighted the risk of AI, especially when they can set their own goals, improve their own code, and act autonomously. This will be the real issue that we all need to watch for. At number three, India becomes the world's number three AI nation. According to Stanford University's Global AI Vibrancy Index, India has jumped to rank three in the world for AI competitiveness. Yes, India has overtaken the UK and South Korea. Last year, India was ranked seventh. This year, it's third, behind only the US and China. Stanford tracks real signals, AI research, talent, infrastructure, investment, and government policy. This isn't hype. This is data. India isn't just using AI anymore. India is building AI at scale. The global AI race just got very real. And India is officially on the podium. The implication is a significant leap for India in AI. A Chinese AI chip maker, Meta X Integrated Circuits, saw its shares rise up to 755% as it debuted on the China star market. It made it one of the strongest first day performances globally for a company valued above $1 billion. The move matters beyond stock. With US export controls, China is accelerating its domestic AI chip strategy across design, manufacturing, and commercialization. The timing is notable. While global AI stocks are facing valuation pressure and scrutiny over data center economics, Chinese markets are actively backing AI hardware self-sufficiency. The signal is clear. China is prioritizing local AI compute capacity, even if it means accepting lower performance in the near term. At number five is trust open models, and the China question. In discussions on online podcasts and elsewhere, a central question has emerged. Should enterprises prioritize cost and capability or trust and governance? Chinese open source models are improving rapidly and are significantly cheaper to run. For startups and developers, the economics are compelling. However, concerns persist around data security, transparency, alignment with regulatory norms, and geopolitical risk. As a result, enterprises in regulated sectors like finance, healthcare, government remain cautious, regardless of model performance. This tension between price, performance, and trust is likely to shape AI adoption decisions over the next phase. At number six, the competitive pressure among AI labs continues to increase. This week, there are rumors that Grok is nearing release. With that, there are sure to be new benchmarks for LLM models. To gauge expectations, we looked at poly markets, where participants place real money bets on AI outcomes. Two questions stand out. 
The first one is which company will have the best AI model by the year end? The answer is decisive. It is Google. The second major question, which company will have the best AI model for coding by the end of 2025? Here, OpenAI leads outpacing Anthropic, which is a true shocker. At number seven is AI fatigue that is setting in. Are you bored of AI? It seems you're not the only one. AI fatigue is real. New model releases barely register. Benchmark wins don't excite us anymore. Even billion dollar AI investment announcements are starting to feel routine. And at the same time, feeling, is this it? MIT highlighted this shift clearly in its series of articles, Hype Correction. AI may still be the hottest ticket in town, but it is time to reset our expectations. After two years of constant launches and hype, attention has moved from what's possible to what actually works. The simple conclusion that AI is still far from replacing lawyers, even if it can pass the bar. Or coders, the hottest use case for AI at the moment. A growing body of research suggests that Claim productivity gains in coding may be just an illusion. MIT Technical Review and the hype correction does make you think. At number eight, we've got Satya Nadella's memo. An internal memo from Microsoft CEO revealed how the company is framing the current phase of AI. The message is clear, adapt to the AI grind or resign. Nadella stated that Microsoft is no longer in the early innings of AI. It's in the middle innings of the shift. In the memo, Nadella wrote, this will allow our engineering leaders and me to be laser focused on our highest ambition technical work across our data center build out, systems architecture, AI science, and product innovation to lead with intensity and pace in this generational platform shift. The memo emphasized focus, intensity, and pace. At number nine is Larry Ellison, Oracle's co-founder and chairman. On X, he highlighted a structural distinction that's becoming increasingly important. He described two categories of AI systems. Low latency AI, designed for robots, autonomous vehicles, and physical systems where decisions must be made in milliseconds. Stuff like Tesla. The second is cloud-based AI reasoning, designed for analysis, planning, and enterprise decision-making. One model does not fit all use cases, especially when AI will move from the screen into the physical world. At number 10, we have ChatGPT and enterprise productivity. This week, OpenAI released its State of Enterprise AI report based on a survey of 9,000 workers using AI. These findings show measurable productivity gains. 75% of workers report that AI has improved the speed or quality of their output. Workers are reporting saving 40 to 60 minutes per day on average. Heavy users report more than 10 hours are saved per week. AI is contributing to measurable value across functions, whether it be IT, marketing, product teams, or HR professionals, and also engineering. The significance here is practical. Now let's move on to our AI assistant reports. Let's get into the viral AI stories this week. First, we had Washington Post AI podcast backlash. Washington Post's AI-generated personalized podcasts sparked internal revolt and public ridicule after reports of invented, misattributed quotes and had errors. Washington Post, however, instead of removing the feature, decided to double down because this is how products are developed and built. The Grok Plus Bondi Beach attack misinformation at number two was most distressing. After the Bondi Beach attack, AI-fueled misinformation spread fast. 
including wrong identifications and AI-generated fakes, with Grok being cited in the mix. Legitimate news was circulating, but it was buried under misinformation turbocharged by AI. At number three, a woman in Japan just married an AI and we didn't even blink. This week made one thing clear. AI is not slowing down, but the conversation around AI is changing. Less hype, more scrutiny, more execution. See you next week.